Hello everybody, today we will discuss one of the solidification techniques and that is zone melting. Actually this process is a very old process and of course industrially already developed this process and we can say the industrial use of zone melting is there, it is always there but we need to understand here the basic principle of the zone melting process. So, zone melting is basically the name indicates that it is a very small zone we select it and want to keep on melting uh, the particular zone and then allow to solidification one particular direction and gradually move this heat source to a direction so that it keep on melting and, uh, and at the same time subsequently there might be some solidification one, one particular direction. So, therefore, if you see that what is the purpose of the zone melting process? So, zone melting is basically used to purify an element or compound or to bring the uniformity in the composition of the of a component. It is basically try to control the composition. It is a very uh, simple and convenient method of the zone melting process and that is why it is having huge impact in the in that there is a industrial use is there, it is always there. So, in principle it works on this thing, the select a small zone melting a short zone and causing this liquid zone to move. So, that means at the same time liquid zone is to move one particular direction keep on subsequently this the it is a converting sol through solidification this the solidified zone it will create. So, here we see that impure material. So, that purify uh, this particular element we say this is the long bar we have considered as an example. And with this thing long bar we create some kind of the heat source we just interact with the heat source and that heat source might be from the induction heating or uh, some kind of uh, this thing recent heatings or a radio frequency wave can also be utilized to control heating one particular small zone. So, once we zone we create the molten zone then depending upon the segregation coefficient value. So, that means uh, whether this uh, nature of the composition versus temperature for a binary alloy system and uh, from there we can understand the if segregation coefficient is less than 1 it means that expected that melting point of the solute B is lower as compared to the melting point of the solute A. So, then solute B can be uh, shifted one particular uh, direction or maybe we maintain the uniform uh, composition. So, in principle that we create the molten zone and gradually this molten zone is moved if the figure if you follow the figure 1 it is a impure material we are assuming then figure 2 application of the heat flux and there keep and keep create is creation of the molten zone then gradual movement of the zone. So, that is the uh, figure 3. So, we keep on moving one particular very slowly or some defined speed we move it such that remaining this part will be the solidify and this is the uh, gradually it is solidify and you see that there might be some changing of the composition also. And we say it is simply the purification of the uh, uh, um, this particular uh, element or alloy system. Now, once we get this we move this heat source at the end then all impurities is collected is basically in principle it is a one particular zone. So, it is a molten zone is moving towards the end and this is the become the solid pure metal is created the solidified is created uh, in this, this part. So, this is the uh, just an overview of this process it works in this particular way. Now, what are the different steps of the zone melting process? So, since the selective zone we are uh, melting here to purify the metal. So, that is what it is called the zone melting process. So, here first is the material selection of the metal is very important and whether selection of the particular metal whether it will be successful or not in depends on the what kind of the material selection is the what kind of the alloy or particular material selection is basically is important in this first step. Second step is the how we are creating the molten zone. So, I mean to say that is the size of the molten zone. This, so, that is also very important uh, because molten zone size is basically small then quickly can reach the equilibrium composition. So, equilibrium solidification over a small range of the time or over a small spatial distance 
So, that is why molten zone creation the size of the molten zone is also important. Then movement of the molten zone that means what is the speed we are following to move this heat source from one direction to the another direction such that the solidification can be in the to follow some equilibrium conditions or non equilibrium conditions or near equilibrium conditions it depends on this thing what way this is the movement of the molten zone is we are following in this particular process. Then of course, the solidification behavior of this particular alloy is also important and then finally, the collection of the uh, impurity. So, once we get it we get the all in collected the all impurities through this passage of the molten zone creation of the molten zone movement of the particular molten zone at the end the impurity is basically collected there. So, that is why the impurity will be collected it depends on the what kind of the segregation coefficient we are utilizing for this uh, particular uh, system. Now, this is the steps we follow, but uh, different heat source we say that can use either resistance heating index, um, induction heating both can be utilized here because in that case the induction heating or resistance heating this control heating can be done in this case. Now, in this case growth is achieved by moving the heat source related to the axis of the uh, container. So, relative to the axis of the container we growth we try to growth in one particular direction it, I mean to say the solidification growth is basically a moving in this that, that direction. So, it depends on the this uh, growth is achieved depending heat source and it is moving with respect to the geometric shape of the uh, component to whom to uh, in which we are performing the zone melting operation. But mainly limited to the use of for purification of the feed material. So, it is basically limited to use for the purification of the this feed material uh, this is the feed material and for them this purification is there, but whether I again I am telling that whether purification will occur or not it depends on the segregation uh, coefficient value for this particular alloy system. Now, once we understand this is the basic principle of the zone melting process we can go further analysis of the zone melting process. So, this zone melting process uh, we can see it is might be having the three different uh, the lateral section uh, la lateral naming is like that one is the purification of the materials for the crystal growth this is also known as the zone refining. So, it is a purification of the materials this for the crystal growth. So, this is called the zone refining second one is the producing crystal with uniform composition that is called the zone leveling process and finally, growing crystal without any crucible that means, the floor zone method we can utilize in this case if you observe that uh, we do not need uh, basically we need some kind of the support at the bottom probably. So, that is the uh, uh, this thing. So, it is a solidification uh, can be done without using any kind of crucible that is why this is called the float zone method as well. So, these are the basic uh, the parallel naming or parallel uh, processes we just which is at associated with the zone melting process. So, we can say that it is a three different zone refining, zone leveling and the float zone method these are the three different methods is associated with the zone melting operation. Now, of course, we can see that impurities is basically traveling with the molten zone. So, when you creating the molten the impurities somehow it is collected one particular position and the impurities is collect it is passing through the molten zone such that during the solidification then in uh, the uh, this when liquid phase to uh, solidification uh, solid phase through solidification occurs in that case impurities are staying in the molten zone. So, that is why impurities traveling with the molten zone from one end of the rod to the and the last end where the all the impurities is actually deposited this is the uh, principle of this zone melting operation. This process is very effective for the removal of the impurities usually the application started from here the semiconducting elements. So, removal of the impurities of the semiconducting elements are the germanium, silicon and gallium these are the mostly used or uh, uh, in the this uh, this zone melting process just to uh, remove the impurities from this semiconducting elements and that is why uh, it is already industrially developed process and this process is also used for the refining the high purity metals. So, for the refining of the high purity metal this similar kind of the methodology or zone melting process we can utilize. Now, if we analyze these things. 
So, when you are talking about the removal of the impurities, the here we are saying the impurities with a segregation coefficient k is less than 1 can be accumulated very effectively. By multiple passes, if, if it is not happening, all the impurities can may not be uh, removed for single passes. In that cases, multiple passes can be followed, and such that it is a uh, very accurately these impurities can be removed at the towards the end of the ingot. And uh, here we are missing this particular point the segregation coefficient k less than 1 in this case. You can treat like that so if you remember when you the composition versus uh, um, uh, this uh, temperature versus composition uh, we, we, we plotting in a binary alloy system and here there we can see the melting point of uh, A the, it is 100 percent A and this side is the uh, this element B here. So, it is a binary alloy. So, melting this the slope is this way when this is the slope then definitely the melting point of uh, pure B is less than melting point of the pure A. So, that is why with this situation the segregation coefficient will always be lower. So, in this case the K should be always less than uh, 1. So, therefore, low melting point material is a B the this thing we can we, if we say the impurity in the form of a B present in the in a material. So, then in that case this situation low melting point material is basically uh, removed uh, in, in this through this uh, this uh, this zone melting operation. So, that is why we are telling K less than 1, but it entirely depends on the temperature versus composition diagram uh, and the what uh, the, the slope. If the slope is other way also, then in that cases K should be greater than 1. So, I mean to say that if the slope is something like that, if you start with this thing, the binary alloy system, then in this case T A, the melting point of A less than of melting point B. In that cases, this may this we can say theoretically that this zone melting will be effectively. Uh, will be efficient when k should be uh, greater than 1. So, like that, so th from that point of view, we can say whether uh, in this case the k should be less than 1 uh, is effective uh, 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 for the uh, uh, in the zone melting operation. Now, if we assume the, uh, the initially the bar was in the uniform composition C0 composition and it is surrounded by the small section of the coil of length A. For example, we see the length of the sec length of the coil of the section um, coil equal to say suppose A and then that is coil is basically used to heating the, uh, the substrate material. Now, when the zone melting solidification uh, model the displacement of the coil must be at a rate that allows C is S equal to K C L. It means that when it is following the composition of the uh, um, the solid at this particular temperature equal to K into uh, C L that means we have a segregation coefficient here we can define K in term. So, if it is exactly equal to C S equal to K into C L it means that we are following the near equilibrium uh, solidification condition such that this has to be maintained at the solid liquid interface equilibrium has to be maintained. Maintaining it means that probably this process is very effective if there is a slow movement of this uh, this heat source one, one, one particular direction. So, in this case the, the rest can be higher, but definitely the movement of the heat source then solidification front can move higher. In this case that can be in unidirectional uh, to that of the unidirectional, unidirectional model that means with respect to that it can be speed can be higher since only uniform composition exists at the initial bar liquid zone at the A is required. So, composition of the liquid zone of the A is required uh, uniform composition of the A is required in that case probably we can move this little higher as compared to the just to purify the uh, metal in, in this uh, uh, using the zone melting operation. So, I mean to say that if, if you want to want the for example, impurities from the semiconducting elements in that case probably we need to follow very uh, this thing. Uh, try to reach the equilibrium conditions, but if we follow the composition can be uniform in that say that means, if we try to follow the zone labeling operations in that case the movement can be little bit higher as compared to the, the unit uh, this, uh, this, uh, this model this uh, melt uh, the what model I have it here that means with respect to the equilibrium uh, condition. Now, 
to understand the better uh, this zone melting operations uh, further we need to some references also because this we have already discussed the alloy solidification but i am just repeating here just to correlate this understanding with the zone melting operation so if you remember that we have discussed three different cases during the solidification the third one one is the first one is the equilibrium condition second one is the no diffusion is solid but um, mixing or stirring of the liquid metal is following in that case and third one no diffusion is solid but diffusional mixing in the liquid is followed uh, during the solidification of the binary alloy system. Now in that case we, we can construct the, the simple this diagram temperature versus composition diagram. So suppose initial composition equal to x0 uh, for this alloy system and we can see the k the segregation coefficients can be defined xs by xl this uh, the with reference to the composition xs the solid and the liquid and we can say this corresponds to the kx0 uh, this is initial composition we starting from this point the melting and from mel this started solidification from liquid so liquidus temperatures to the solidus temperature stability so at the liquidus temperature uh, to solidus so at this particular uh, temperature this corresponding solid composition equal to kx0 and uh, in this case the, the temperature t3 because in under equilibrium condition the solidification will occur between t1 and t3 temperature so at t1 kx0 and at t3 uh, uh, here the liquid composition equal to x0 by k so x0 by k and kx0 over which uh, this uh, composition can vary but in, the, in this as per the binary phase diagram in this case the, it is the uh, x maximum values of the x of the solution might be having and here the solidification will terminate at the eutectic composition eutectoid composition so see assumptions of the we just we try to understand this particular uh, graphical representation of the in case of the no diffusion in the solid but diffusional mixing in the liquid phase assumptions is the after initial stage so system can reach the steady state with the stable solidification rate that is the uh, first uh, assumption second one is the liquid composition decreases from liquidus line to the bulk concentration definitely so liquid uh, in this case uh, the liquid composition the gradually the in front of the solidification front there may be the concentration of the liquid composition is much more and it is a uh, gradually try to reach the bulk composition in, in this case try to reach tends to x0. A local equilibrium at the solid liquid interface exists the system can reaches the steady state in this case balance of the diffusion and or solid balance of the diffusion and solidification needs to be maintained. So, I mean to say that that some a uh, time is required to allow to do some kind of the uh, diffusion to occur uh, in, in this uh, in this particular case and of course it always reaches eutectic point but it is not the eutectoid but it is eutectic point x e. So, always try to reach the eutectic point or solidification terminates at the eutectic point. So, that means at the composition x e in this case. Since in this case there is no steering action is following therefore or convection is uh, is not following in this case therefore rejected solute will be transported a by the diffusion that means if you see the rejected solute means that gradually temperature is decreasing but the liquid phase composition is increases so liquid phase composition is increases but the so solid phase composition is actually decreases if you follow uh, uh, this uh, if you follow this uh, um, this uh, as per this line that uh, temperature versus composition line so if you see when it temperature is decreasing from t1 to t3 the composition of the liquid phase is actually increases but composition of the solid phase is actually decreases so that's why here definitely at the lower temperature solidification gradually the temperature is gradually decreasing the solidification occurs. So, some part is the already solidified and in this case between the T1 and T3 is the it is the MUSI zone M U S MUSI zone but here the mixture of the solid plus liquid. So, whatever liquid exists at the MUSI zone that always the composition will be more than that of the temperature when the temperature will be the gradually decreasing between T1 and T3. So, that is why the extra solute will be rejected and will be transported away through the diffusion and rejected in the sense that when it is liquid to the solid phase the because solid phase composition is gradually decreases. So, then the solute will be rejected and it will be the concentration will be much more just in front of the solid liquid interface 
and therefore, this has to be transported away through diffusion to occur. So, through diffusion it will be transported away. So, that is the assumptions and that is the happens in this particular situation. So, it means that this is a rapid build up of the solute concentration solute the, uh, concentration of the solute rapid build up is gradually increases ahead of the solid uh, ahead of the solid in front solid. But at the same time rapid increase in the composition of the solid also form and initial state is basically transient. So, these are the typical characteristics of this uh, this particular case and if you see that solidification is made to occur at constant rate steady state is reached when the interface temperature reaches to T3. So, if you want to reach the steady state temperature, so interface temperature will try to reach the T3 and in this case solid will form close to X0 but liquid adjacent liquid the composition will be the X0 by K. So, solid will close to X0 because uh, no we are not allowing no diffusion in the solid. So, in this case the solute is basically uh, more or less the uh, this path it will be following, but uh, diffusional mixing will try to occur. So, uh, uh, at this uh, at, at this particular temperature uh, uh, T3, so here the solid phase might be having some composition of the X0 uh, in, in this case uh, this thing, but liquid this gradually the composition of the liquid is gradually increasing and diffusion to occur. So, try to accommodate this thing, but it will be the adjacent to the liquid uh, adjacent liquid to solid in this case the composition will be the x 0 by k. So, that means, this is the value of this composition adjacent to the liquid interface. Here you can see that how it is varying uh, this thing at the two diff different temperatures. You see no diffusion in the solid, but diffusional mixing in the liquid phase. In this case, we can see that it starts with the k x 0 that the here in the start the solidification k x 0 this is the k x 0 this is the composition at at temperature T 1 then it will reaching if you see reaching gradually at this particular at the particular and any in any temperature between T 1 and T 3 uh, it is a close reaching close to the x 0, but not exactly x 0. And then the in front of the solid liquid interface there is a in the liquid phase there is a concentration actually increases. So, such that and the away from this thing it is gradually try to reach the bulk concentration that means try to reach the towards the x 0 and the liquid phase. So, so that means there is a there is a some it means that always the when you allowing the deposition to occur it needs some time to deposition to occur. So, that is why ahead of the solid liquid interface we can expect that some kind of the uh, the concentration is much more uh, in the liquid phase and away from this thing solid uh, the towards the bulk uh, liquid phase there we can expect that the it will try to reach the close to the the initial composition that means x 0 here. Now, this between T 1 and T 3, but when it is reaches at the steady state T 3 that means one once you reach the steady state uh, T 3 temperature it means that uh, in principle when follow the equilibrium solidification condition so at temperature T 3 the solidification should be finished in this case that means should be completed in, uh, at the temperature T 3. But at the if you follow the steady state at temperature T 3 it is like that if you see we started with the K x 0 initial composition of the solid phase and then try to reach solid try to reach certain time some this is tangent state uh, try to reach this particular point which is the composition equivalent to the initial concentration or bulk uh, composition uh, of, of the uh, solid. So, here up to this point it is more or less at the steady state situation, but here is again gradually the ahead of this thing the it can reach up to the composition up to the x 0 by k. So, because solute will be rejected here in front of this thing to adjust the composition of the liquid phase, but it can go up to maximum x 0 by phase and again away from this thing gradually it is try to reach the in the liquid phase also try to reach the the bulk composition x 0. So, this is happens at T 3 temperature, but beyond the T 3 temperature because it, in this case we can see the beyond T 3 temperature we can see the it can go up to the 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 x e that means eutectic composition because it, it as per the diagram 
the this binary phase diagram the beyond the, the solidification must be terminated at the eutectic temperature. So, whatever uh, composition exists here the eutectic temperature composition can it can go up to the eutectic composition during the solidification, but certain period here is that this part is basically the ten steady state and this is initially it is the transient state st and that is also a tangent state and here it can go the maximum values of the composition if you see the uh, maximum values of this one uh, this is the maximum in the uh, solid uh, phase the maximum composition can go up to this and in the liquid phase it can go maximum of the x e that means eutectic composition can go. So, it means that it is solid solidification term means when it is reaching the eutectic composition. So, the last drop of the liquid when it is try to solidify it might be having the composition is x e and then it cannot composition uh, cannot further increase the uh, concentration on the, uh, in, the uh, in the liquid phase uh, during the solidification. So, therefore, uh, this is the steady state situation and uh, we can reach up to this point and this the uh, at T e that eutectic temperature and below this is the status of the composition change with respect to distance. Uh, we can see uh, this is the uh, typical pattern associated with the no diffusion in the solid, but diffusional mixing in the liquid phase. Now, no diffusion in the solid and mixing in the liquid phase means in the second case the case B when you are discussing this thing. So, we need to understand the distinguish between the diffusional mixing in the liquid phase and external steering or convection is happening in the liquid phase. In that case we see it is reaching the start with the k x 0 maximum, but at this just under T 1 T 1 that means at under T 1 it is varying the k x 0 composition. And then at temperature T 2 that in between T 1 and T 3 it is like that k x 0 try to reach up to certain composition excess at this particular at temperature T 2 excess is the composition of the solid phase and composition of the liquid phase x L, but there is a this is the we are allowing the external steering only. So, it is not creating any kind of the concentration gradient in front of these things. So, directly the liquid phase is having the x L composition and this excel composition remaining liquid will also try to maintain the excel composition of the liquid phase at temperature uh, T2. So, here it is just difference between the diffusional mixing the liquid or we are following the external steering or the convection in the liquid phase in that cases we can see that this diagram the this will be different. So, here the some concentration gradient exchange gradually bulk temperature, but in this case it is the exactly the at excess or x l without any uh, concentration gradient in front of the solid liquid interface. So, these are the differences and now we can utilize this the basically we are trying to utilize the understanding of this one this diagram to further analyze the zone melting operation. So, here we can start with the initial composition of the uh, bar equal to C 0 and suppose at a distance x and this is the uh, coil length of the coil A and that part is basically melting as a particular instant and then but this part is x distance is already solidified. So, therefore, solid liquid interface will be here at the in this position solid liquid interface and this is a non melted zone. Now, the I we are creating the situation 1 that means, uh, in this case how what we can make the balance of the this thing the suppose taking into account the, the fact that total amount of the solute B. So, for example, A and B is mixing. So, solute B must be balanced between the origin of the part at x equal to 0 and right side of the liquid solid interface. So, therefore, it is must be balanced in that way the amount of the solute B uh, we what we can calculate calculate this thing. So, x s the composition of the solid phase and composition of the solid phase and the uh, and the, the solid liquid interface at say suppose distance d x. So, x s into d x and integration of 0 to x that is maintained here plus at the a, a is this one the total length and this is on the liquid phase. So, a over the liquid phase the composition equal to x l. So, is basically this is the composition x s already solidified and this is the composition is basically x l. So, 
a into x l that means the over the distance a the composition the uniform composition x l that means liquid phase a l that should be equal to the initial composition x plus a total into x 0, x 0 was the initial composition. So, at particular point at this instant at a distance x the already solidified part. So, here we are assuming the already solidified the composition x s or even it is varying x s is varying then also with respect to uh, elemental length d x and then we perform the integration 0 to x we are getting this expression. So, this is the solidified part this is the uh, melting part liquid part and this is the overall balance. So, x 0 into x plus a over the length x plus a into x 0 and assuming the variation of the composition with respect to length a and other dimension remains the unit in this particular case. Now, if you do it perform the integration. So, I think x s we are keeping as a constant it is not varying with respect to x. So, therefore, x into x 0 minus x s here we can do the manipulate and uh, that rearrange this equation x s equal to a into x l minus x 0. Now, if we perform this thing the differential of that d x into x a x 0 minus x s equal to a d x l we are assuming this is the variation of the x l. So, liquid composition is varying and there d x l and uh, in here d x into x 0 minus x s these are the remains constant here. So, here x is the varying and the x l is varying particular point. So, we can reach this particular expression we can see the next slide also that how make this balance here. Therefore, a is the length of the heating coil x is the distance from the origin of the coil at a particular time x l is the uniform concentration of the liquid inside the coil and x x is the instantaneous concentration instantaneous concentration of the solid just in the left side of the solid liquid interface. So, just to left side of the solid liquid interface, but if the the in, uh, concentration will the excess, but if it is excess is not varying with respect to x then we can put key excess is as a here uh, um, as a constant here, but here in this case the x l is varying. Now, we reach this expression, but we can see explain the other way also x 0 minus x s into d x equal to a into d x l. So, this expression can be represents like that for example, at a distance s this is already solidified s this is the coil length a and this is the solid charge with about to this is the uh, not um, it is a solid phase, but before melting. Now, if we follow this is the x and this is the concentration along the y axis. Mm, and we can see it starting the uh, starting with the initial the at x equal to 0 it start with the k x 0 k x 0 and particular element the over the length d x the solid liquid interface uh, at this point the over length d x here the highlighted part and that should be equal to the what is the increment of the concentration of the uh, liquid phase d x l we just make d x l in the actually this is the y along the y axis this is the incremental elemental increment of the x l d x l and d x l is increment over the length l. So, over the uh, melting this thing. So, d a into d x l and here you can see the bulk concentration equal to x 0 because in the solid phase we can go up to x 0. So, that is why we can see that d x into x 0 minus x s in this case and x s equal to in this particular case equal to uh, um, um, this uh, we can see that uh, he, yes. So, d x l here you can see the a into d x l. So, d we just you can see the k equal to x uh, x s by x l in this case. So, uh, d x l d x s by k. So, here we put the d x l equal to d x s by k. So, a into d x s k the other side. So, k into x 0 minus x s into d x equal to a into d x s. Now, here x s is basically k x 0 in this particular case because uh, this varying here or I can say this is the uh, x 0, but I can say that it is starting at uh, it, it starting from at this point it is basically x s. 
So, that is why x0 minus xs into dx equal to a into dxl. So, once we do that I can get this equation and we put the boundary condition and x equal to 0 x s equal to k into x 0. So, if we put this boundary condition and we can reach the variation of the x s as a function of the other para x. So, x s equal to x 0 into 1 plus k minus 1 exponential minus k x by a over the space this is the variation of the uh, profile. So, basically variation of the this x s. So, x s is varying this this is the curve x s is varying with respect to distance x. So, uh, x or with reference to the a also x s is varying like that. So, here uh, we can reach this expression, but finally once you get the we can k x 0 we can start. So, x s can go up to certain point and try to reach the bulk composition here, but at the end part I mean to say that at the end part here the part 2 and uh, this 3 we can see that at the that a, a distance that means it is part 2 over the distance this is the a distance in this case this is the distance a length of the coil. So, up to that distance it is the variation of the concentration is like this it is a reach to the maximum value the terminated that eutectic composition it can reach up to that point. So, over which over the length it, the heating coil length that it is again varying this thing. So, this particular step with the is basically in the steady state situation. Now, this formula is valid actually if x equal to 0 until x equal to l minus a, l is the total length and l minus a means up to this point it is valid. And when the sketching this formula k less than 1 of course, all these cases with the k less than 1 it can be observed that smaller the length of the heating coil a the faster of the asymptote x 0 will be rich. So, here you can see that the slope of the curve at x equal to 0. So, d x s by d x, but at x equal to 0 that is the slope of the curve at this particular point. So, slope of the curve is very high then is very quickly reach to the bulk concentration of the component. So, therefore, uh, this if we this is the case the very then in that cases we need the total coil length can be lesser also. If you try to quick quickly reach that means with the high gradient at this at x equal to 0 uh, means it is a it is a it can it can very quickly reach this position in that case uh, the this is the case 1 for example and this is the case 2 only the slope is low and another slope is high. So, slope is low means we need the relatively large length of the coil length, but slope is low means the coil length can be less and here the slope at x equal to 0 is this one. This is basically d x s by d x at x equal to 0 equal to this one x 0 k 1 minus k into 1 by a. Now, you can see, but when we are talking about the for zone between 2 and 3. So, here we can see that this expression is valid up to this point up to l minus a that means up to this point uh, this expression we can utilize this expression up to uh, l minus a point. But for the remaining part the variation of the concentration also we can see the distribution of the solute uh, can be like that it can follow the progressive law uh, deduced by the substituting the value of the x 0 by x 0 by k which is the composition of the liquid at the interface 2. So, which composition of the liquid at the interface 2 and therefore, solid distribution until to the end of the part follow this expression. So, from here to here we can follow uh, the expression is like that that x s equal to x 0 into 1 minus x by a into k minus 1. So, here we can we can get this kind of the expression is uh, valid solute distribution uh, from 2 until the end part. So, from here to here at this distance this expression is valid. So, here you can see the x is equal to x 0 1 minus x by a to the power k minus 1. So, here we can see um, if from here to here. So, if x equal to 0 then x is equal to we can calculate x equal to 0 x is equal to x 0. So, that means this is the point x equal to 0, but when x equal to a then x s equal to 
uh, 0 basically. So, that means all are the uh, uh, x is equal to 0 means all are the having the eutectic composition or you try to x l composition. So, that is why that x equal to a at this point. So, this point between these two points this equation is valid and we can represent the variation the solute distribution over this particular zone. So, this is the uh, typical understanding of the zone melting process and we have tried to understand the in the solidification of the binary alloy system and of course, we started with the this analysis we are assuming the initially the k should be less than 1 then all equation is valid and why k less than 1 because k less than 1 it is entirely decides that in the binary alloy system the solute B and the two composition A and B the solute B which might be having uh, the uh, in the presence in the form of impurity here and that based on these things we do all kind of the analysis uh, concentration distribution of zone melting process. Now, uh, we will try to uh, uh, discuss about the rapid solidification process. This is another sol the solidification techniques uh, it is known as the rapid solidification. The rapid solidification technology is basically the removal from a molten sample at the very high rate which is accomplished mainly through the conductive heat transfer. So, rapid solidification means the basically we are following the very high cooling rate such that very quickly solidification to occurs we can enforce in this way uh, that is called the rapid solidification process. So, in few manufacturing process uh, rapid solidification occurs uh, this thing for example, relatively in case of the additive manufacturing process the rapid we can observe the rapid solidification. So, I mean to say that rapid solidification sometimes is the inherent to the process itself and certain cases if we follow the rapid solidification we can get certain kind of the structure, certain kind of the microstructure is possible to achieve. So, that is why sometimes intentionally we can perform the rapid solidification to get the desired structure in a sample. Now, if you look this rapid solidification technology, so what are the benefits of these things? First is that in general we can say the reduction in the grain size because very short time we just try to extract the heat and enforcing quickly the solidify the metal. So, we can expect the reduction in the grain size and that reduction grain size is proportional to the, the cooling rate. So, high cooling rate means the grain size will also reduce. This is the first benefit if you want to get very fine structure rapid solidification is usually followed. If you want to increase the chemical homogeneity. Uh, increase the chemical homogeneity with increasing the uh, cooling rate. So, that is also another aspect it is possible to achieve in case of the rapid solidification chemical in homoge homogeneity if we try to achieve we need to follow the rapid solidification. Second due to rapid solidification the solubility and homogeneity ranges of equilibrium phases is basically increases with increasing the cooling rate. Cooling rate cooling rate is basically cooling rate is increasing means we are basically enforcing the rapid solidification. So, high cooling rate is basically try to promote the solubility and the homogeneity ranges for the equilibrium phases. Uh, this is another benefit we can achieve and but it is associated with the producing of the some kind of the metastable crystalline phases which may not present in the in equilibrium uh, solidification uh, process. So, that means metastable structure can form and which phases are not present, which phases we can absent in the equilibrium condition. So, that is the another thing. So, metastable structure crystalline phases can be um, we, we can get through the sol rapid solidification process. But in this case failure of the liquid to undergo crystallization entirely. So, sometimes failure of the liquid to under uh, if there is a um, uh, we can expect the very rapid solidification the crack might forming these cases and but failure of the liquid at the through during the crystallization occurs and it is basically because of the formation of the non equilibrium glassy phase. So, when you try to form I think this failure might occurs sometimes because it is a clear the non equilibrium uh, glassy phase is associated with the rapid solidification. Now, further we can look into this thing if we so follow the solution of the Fourier heat conduction equation 
and we say some dimensionless parameters variable y the cooling rate can be calculated like this. So, dt by dt this is the rate of temperature change is associated with the temperature difference thermal diffusivity alpha and y c characteristic length uh, l also thickness of the liquid metal at the initial temperature and x is the spatial coordinate. So, l is the thickness of the liquid metal if you uh, perform some experiment. So, what can be the thickness of the liquid metal when it is following the rapid solidification process and t is the time. So, here it is a dimensionless parameter, but y c is the characteristic value of the dimension vari variable that can be alpha t into x square alpha t into x square. If you put it uh, here you can see that uh, all this value delta t alpha is there and y c is basically characteristic uh, dimension alpha t by x square and here you can uh, l square. So, here you can see the material properties. So, here the dimension is the same basically delta t by t we are getting. So, in that dimension so ten temperature change with respect to time and uh, using this dimensional parameters we can easily estimate the cooling rate associated with the manufacturing process or associated with the solidification or I can say the rapid solidification process. For example, for the rapid quenching uh, process the thin liquid layer on the high conductive copper. So, liquid layer on the high conductive copper where the alpha equal to this value you can get y equal to alpha t by 3 is or equal to 3 l the dimension equal to 0 0.01 centimeter I think l represents the thickness of the solidified metal and delta t suppose temperature difference equal to 1000 Kelvin. Then it shows that the cooling rate estimated like that dt by dt equal to equal to 10 to the 6 Kelvin per second. So, we can see that that is much of cooling rate is achieved or required in case of the associated with the rapid solidification process. Now, to basic understanding of the rapid solidification process there are the we can perform the through experiments that we can see the we represent the rapid solidification through experiment that is called the one of the experiments is you known the spat quenching process or the smell spinning methodology. In the splat quenching method is the liquid drop is rapidly flattened by the two uh, the two rapidly closing copper plate. So, between the two copper plate uh, we can put the liquid drop and then uh, it can be uh, flattened try to using this copper because copper is the having the very high conductivity. So, when liquid metal is in contact with the copper a high rate of the heat is transported through the copper. So, this can be considered as a the uh, rapid solidification process and experimental can be done using the copper itself. So, therefore, the splat, the splat is the in this case the thickness of the splat is may achieve around 50 micrometer. So, this is just an way to do the experiment to understand the rapid solidification process. So, so that theoretically have calculated in the rapid solidification process if this is the these are the different parameters non dimensional in terms of the non dimensional you can see it can achieve the 10 to the 6 Kelvin per second as is, that is the rapid solidification in rapid solidification process. Now, another technique that is called the melt spinning operation in this case also a thin layer of the liquid is ejected through a slotted nozzle and this thing and that is all the rotating copper drum. So, here also rotating copper drum slotted nozzle is basically splitting the, the liquid uh, droplet uh, liquid metal. So, this liquid is pulled over the drum surface and solidifies. So, this liquid is pulled over the drum surface and it is solidifies while in intimate contact with the copper drum. So, in this contact with the copper drum then immediately solidify because copper drum is uh, readily available to transport the heat very quickly. So, because thermal diffusivity is very high in this case. So, that is why in this case it is also possible to achieve even solid that uh, layer can be thickness can be might be 20 to uh, 50 micrometer. So, with this understanding or through this experiments we can easily estimate using this expression of the cooling rate in non dimensional parameter what can be the cooling rate in this associated with the splat quenching experiment or melt spinning methodology for a particular material. So, this is the way to understand the this uh, rapid solidification uh, techniques uh, in, in a uh, rapid solidification to estimate the typical cooling rate associated with that. So, here 
we can see that other type of the rapid solidification is also the spray atomization is, is this is application spray atomization. In this case spray atomization process liquid is atomized into rapidly here through the gaseous medium and here moving droplets is basically interact with the gas jet and spread with the gaseous medium cooling medium and in this is cooling medium can be used the helium or argon also. So, here the liquid metal in contact the, the gas jet cooling gas jet in contact with the gas cooling jets immediately it can create the small droplets and this here the thermal diffusivity is the limiting factor to decide the cooling rate when the velocity of doublet is relatively small. So, it is also important because gas atomization process the is limited by the thermal li, thermal diffusivity is the limiting factor. Now, for example, uh, for an atomized droplet of diameter 100 micrometer. So, atomized droplet diameter 100 micrometer and helium we can use as a helium as a cooling medium. In this case, the cooling rate can be achieved like that of the order of 1000 Kelvin per second. So, therefore, this case the we achieve uh, the cooling rate can be 1000 Kelvin per second, but it is limited by the limit the in, uh, already explained the limited by the thermal diffusivity uh, of the material that actually decides what amount of the cooling rate can be achieved maximum amount cooling rate can be achieved in the gas atomization process. So, other example of the smelt spinning also there we can we can expect the rapid solidification occurs in the smelt spinning operation. Here the rotating drum is there over the liquid metal is pour on the rotating drum and with a particular rotation it is contact with this thing liquid metal then it, uh, it, it creates uh, the thin layer or uh, over the um, this surface. Similarly, strip casting also we can express we can expect the rapid solidification also occurs. Strip casting is like that liquid metal is poured between the gap of the two roller and the two roller is basically in the in contact with the copper in and sometimes the uh, in this case the when it is contact the water cool roller can also be utilized. So, that thermal diffusivity becomes very high in this case and then liquid metal once it is poor and it is come out in the form of a solid solidified sheet. So, this is the strip casting process also in that it means that strip casting process also we can find out the, the rapid solidification also. So, these are the different examples where you can find out expect the, the rapid solidification occurs associated with this particular processes. Now, once you analyze the rapid solidification process uh, we can say uh, like this the crystalline solid phase and the liquid phase is basically are different in the atomic structure. So, I mean to say that solid phase and the liquid phase in these two cases. So, they are the atomic structure are different uh, in this case. So, one has the long range of the periodicity and another is the being the uh, kind B the liquid phase might be having the other aperiodic uh, and amorphous kind of the uh, structure might be possible in case of the liquid phase. Now, liquid and the solid phase interface is basically when defined by the few atomic distance. So, sometimes we can define the, the solid liquid interface usually few atomic distance. In this case the free energy of the interface region is usually higher in case of this thing with respect to the solid and the liquid phase. So, between the solid liquid interface the, the energy of interfacial region is much more as compared to the solid and the liquid phase because if you want to create a nucleus uh, at the interface solid liquid interface has that represents an energy barrier to start the nucleation process and this it is necessary to activate this process using some uh, thermal activation process to overcome that energy can be or process can be activated nucleation process activated through the energy barrier thermal activation energy barrier. Now, once the nucleation occurs at the interface the in that case a solid can grow the solid can grow with the advancements of the solid liquid interface. So, uh, this is the uh, in this case the uh, solid phase and this is the liquid phase at the interface it will try to grow in this uh, in, in this direction solid liquid interface, but at in nucleation will start at this particular point and grow up to particular distance. Therefore, melting temperature the change of the we see the change of the volume free energy between the liquid and the solid phases when the liquid and solid phases are in equilibrium. 
So, change of the volume free energy is basically 0. So, therefore, the critical value of the free energy change is infinite in this case. So, because volume free energy is, is 0, the change of the volume free energy is 0 when the between the solid and the liquid phase at the melting point temperature because solid and liquid phase are in equilibrium at the uh, melting point temperature. So, therefore, in this case the critical value of the free energy change and that means energy barrier for the nucleation is basically infinite uh, in this particular uh, in this particular case. Now, therefore, freezing would never occurs in the melting point temperature. It means that since the, the interface energy required you see that the energy barrier the critical value for the free energy change is basically infinite at the uh, there is a change of the phase liquid and the solid phase values of the volume free energy is equal to change is 0 at the melting point temperature. So, in that case the freezing will not occur exactly at the melting point temperature. So, therefore, it needs some amount of the under cooling below the melting point temperature because such that yeah, the change in the volume free energy is proportional to the degree of under cooling. So, when some variation the volume free energy will change below the melting point uh, temperature of course, associated with some amount of the under cooling at that point the nucleation would occurs. It means the liquid can easily be under cools even for the lower than the melting point temperature and of course, without solidification to occur up to certain amount of the under cooling or certain amount of the time. So, that means until exactly I mean to say that exactly not melting point temperature the solidification will occur in this case because it is associated with some under cooling and it takes some uh, this finite time certain amount of the time it can retain to reach certain am uh, amount of the under cooling without solidification in this case. So, therefore, the nucleation time is gradually decreases with increasing the under cooling. So, nucleation time is basically decreases with increasing the under cooling. So, much more under cooling the nucleation time is decreased. It means that if high amount of the under cooling is exists then nucleation is the very quickly nucleation can occur. Now, for the temperature will be reduced in that case, in that case the atomic mobility through diffusion becomes less because that temperature further reduced means the suppose this is the melting point temperature and some degree of under cooling is there. So, it is below that then uh, atomic mobility uh, through diffusion it becomes less and the time for the nucleus to grow becomes longer. So, that means atomic uh, atomic mobility becomes less, but time to grow for the nucleus is much more in this case uh, at this particular situation that means the further lowering the temperature. It means that amount of time for a liquid at a temperature T to become solid is highly nonlinear function of the T that is also true because amount of the time for a liquid one particular temperature the in this case it becomes very much nonlinear function not like linear in this case the it is better explained by the TTT diagram which is typical uh, C shape curve is observed that is why you can observe the C type of curve in a TTT diagram observe uh, that is the lowering the melting point temperature uh, in case of the rapid uh, solidification process. So, that means the cooling rate is the that is why critical cooling rate if you try to see the we estimate the what is the critical, critical cooling rate is required to make a particular phase. So, in that scene the in this case we observe the TTT diagram is typically characterized the in terms of the C shape curve. Now, in the during the rapid cooling the material does not reach to the equilibrium that is true because very rapid cooling not having sufficient time to reach the equilibrium condition state and it will try to remain always in the metastable state. So, in this case the glass is an example of the metastable state. So, glass we can see that however, in this case when you try to understand the metastable phase at the high, very high cooling rate. So, it needs to modify the equilibrium phase diagram to understand the uh, to accommodate the metastable states for this particular material. But the degree of metastability depends on the process dependent because here the intermediate state uh, it is a kind of the intermediate state somehow artificial of because it involves longer than thermal diffusion time and shorter than atomic diffusion time as compared to the conventional process. So, thermal diffusion longer thermal diffusion time and shorter atomic diffusion time is associated at this at this particular intermediate state uh, we, we observe. And therefore, this molten alloy when very uh, rapidly cooling 
or cooled rapidly enough in this cases it is possible to avoid the touching the C nose or is basically C curve of the TTT diagram that you can see from the curve also it is a very high cooling rate it is always tied to not having much of the diffusion, uh, diffusion to occurs in that case it may not touch the transformation exactly the C, uh, C uh, basically C curve associated with the TTT diagram. Here the nucleus is sometimes the nucleus is suppressed and the liquid remains super cooled even for a very low temperature. So, when temperature of the liquid further decreases the its viscosity also increases and below particular temperature the liquid is so viscous that it looks like a solid. So, that is why it looks like a solid or is basically it is a kind of the metastable state or it can create some kind of the intermediate phase is created during the rapid cooling of the uh, metal. Now, here we can see that this diagram also the solid obtained by the freezing the liquid is a glass and the temperature below is the liquid behaves like a solid it is called the glass transition temperature. So, the freezing of the liquid is occurred at the very low temperature and it looks like a is a like a glass and the particular structure and the liquid behaves like a solid which is called the glass transition temperature. So, basically that is associated with the not exactly melting point solidized liquidized temperature in that case is this is when rapid solidification occurs we can define the temperature is the glass transition temperature. So, metallic glass can be produced it means that metallic glass can be produced by the rapid quenching of the metal. So, metallic glass means the the structure is like a uh, glass structure it is produced even for the liquid metal if we follow the rapid solidification. So, here you can see the C curve in a TTT typical TTT diagram we see the elapsed time second and y axis represent the temperature also and see this is the transformation line we represent the transformation starts and transformation end also if it is very slow cooling it can follow this particular line it means that it is passes through the transformation starts and transformation end for a particular phase. But if it is very rapid cooling it is not exactly touching it is a it is escaping the nose curve and it is following uh, this particular curve. So, very quickly because here it is avoiding the diffusion to occurs here. So, this is the typical uh, rapid cooling phenomena curve associated uh, when we try to represent the very high cooling rate in the in the TTT diagram. So, it, it is basically escaping the, the nose here associated with the TTT diagram. So, this represents the rapid cooling and this represents the very slow cooling which is passes through the transformation uh, line. Uh, that such that we can estimate the transfer how much time is required to transformation. But if you see the very rapid cooling it is falling the, the transformation from one phase to another phase is very less in this case. So, here in principle one could cool the liquid first enough definitely any material can be made a glass like structure. So, this critical cooling rate necessary to form the glass is determined by the position of the nose of the C curve that means the in particular material nose of the C curve it depends what can be the critical cooling rate such that it can passes through the glass like structure. So, here the in this case whatever cooling rate is represents here it, that is uh, not exactly touching the uh, nose of the C, uh, uh, the C curve so that it actually decides the, the cooling rate for the rapid cooling. So, it means that the C curve can be different for the different material. So, we have to construct the rapid cooling in such a way that it should not touch the C curve and this from there we can estimate what can be the rapid cooling associated with the uh, this particular process. Here some understanding so that means some data is uh, associated with the rapid solidification for example, for pure metal the critical cooling rate is 10 to the power 12 Kelvin per second it is a very high uh, rate of the cooling, but in case of the it, it is this is for the pure metal. But in case of the many oxide it can be like 1 to 10 Kelvin per second only. But in industry the metallic glass is produced at the critical rate of the 10 to the power 6 Kelvin per second. So, in this is the usual practice in the industry to produce the metallic glasses. Thus only the certain alloy system over a certain composition range can be quenched into the glass. But of course, the not all alloy system but only very specific alloy system and very uh, certain comp comp composition range they can be quenched into the glass. 
now it depends on the position of the nose of the C carp. So, uh, the position of the nose of the C carp, the glass forming ability depends on the critical uh, upon uh, critical composition. So, all depends it means that the critical composition at the nose carp, nose of the C carp and decides the glass forming ability associated with the any kind of the uh, alloy system. Here is some example the because we see the rapid solidification we can follow some metastable phase which is not present in the equilibrium phase diagram. So, that is just example for example, we take one example. Uh, so, here A G uh, silver and G E gallium in this case uh, simple eutectic composition here you can see the HCP phase and uh, this is the simple eutectic in case of the equilibrium phase, but when you follow the rapid cooling it follow the different kind of the phase it can be HCP phase and A3 type of uh, phase is basically possible to there. Lead uh, in this case this particular alloy system it is having the so many intermetallics in the equilibrium phase diagram, but in metastable phase it is having simple cubic pi phase. So, I mean to say that there are so, this so many examples the copper titanium also it key all the, all this kind of creates the different types of the that uh, different phases equilibrium phases they create one phases, but when it is follow the rapid cooling in that cases or rapid solidification if you follow it will having in the metastable phase their structure can be different also. So, overall we can say that rapid solidification is actually tends to resist the kinetic process of the nucleation. So, basically the try to resist the kinetics behavior of the nucleation formation through the in rapid solidification process and of course, it is also influence the growth also from the melt such that growth occurs in such a way such that it try to prevent the reach the equilibrium conditions. So, that is the basic feature of the rapid solidification and of course, rapid solidification we observe it occurs usually at the very deeper the undercooling phase. So, relatively deeper undercooling phase the rapid solidification actually creates the undercooling uh, deeper undercooling phase as compared to the conventional or under equilibrium solidification process. So, rapid solidification also associated with some metastable phases and which is having the melting points which lie below the equilibrium liquid of the system and its favor rapid solidification when the nucleation barrier to the metastable phase is basically lower. In this case, we can expect the rapid solidification is always try to uh, reach that the it is a nucleation barrier to the metastable phase is lower and even that is the competing with the equilibrium phase. So, definitely try to create the metastable phase uh, in this case as compared to the competitive equilibrium phase created by the uh, 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 rapid solidification. The products of the rapid solidification are various metastable crystalline alloy. So, it creates the different crystalline alloy metastable crystalline alloy it is forms by the uh, rapid solidification, but no such metastable or the stable phase can be nucleated during the brief time of the quenching. So, always it try to retain uh, create some kind of the glass like structure the glass is always obtained uh, 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 in this case the if it is not metastable or stable phase can be nucleated then it will always try to create the a glass like structure in a rapid solidification process. So, that is all uh, for today. Uh, thank you very much for your kind attention. Mm -hmm.